some of your favorites as well as some of my favorites. So hymn sing will be the last Sunday in July uh, here in worship and then uh, make sure you give us this card so we know and, and we have a have a sense of uh, you know what things will what songs will touch our hearts and, and make us joyful that day. Uh, next Sunday after worship we are asking the concert planning team to meet so that we can do some review. So that's next Sunday after worship. Uh, we'll find a place that we can do that, maybe over in room two or three or something like that, okay? And I wanna say uh, how uh, uh, amazing it was, our burning questions last week. Uh, the, the kinds of questions are very thoughtful. 
uh, they're very contemporary, and I'm appreciative of the conversation around the table. We will do that again the second week in July. So the second Sunday will be our Burning Questions Sunday, and I think we'll find a little bit quieter place so we can have those conversations too. Are there other announcements that need to be made? Um, I'd just like to mention everybody that um, for the South Brunswick community, the family that was in need, um, between outreach and between the deacons, we gave $300 from the congregation from a Target uh, gift card, and just wanted to mention that to everybody that that's what we gave from the <laughs> hospitality team that makes our, our fellowship time so enjoyable. We're grateful for all of those folks. Are there any other announcements? If not, I'm going to ask Gwen to come forward. Uh, this weekend, a lot is going on. We are celebrating Father's Day, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. We are celebrating Juneteenth, which is uh, about our history together. And um, Gwen has asked to share a prayer and share a little bit about um, something else that's happening uh, that speaks to the diversity of our people. <laughs> Up when uh, the Juneteenth, as you know, that's a wonderful event and a blessing and pulling together of people in group. Well, this is one from our Native American people that welcomed us uh, when we came to this land, those of us who were not here um, first, and those of us who were both, and showed you where the clean water was and the fresh, uh, the, where you could grow your vegetables and the children had the three uh, sisters' gardens that I helped them plant when we had our uh, uh, Easter time. So this is from Ten Bears, a young Karika Komachi. Great spirit, I want no blood upon my land to stain the grass. I want it all clear and pure, and I wish it so. That all who go through among my people may find it peaceful when they come and leave peacefully when they go. So today, if you have the chance to go to the powwow, that's um, on Cranberry Road. The money goes to help feed people. It helps children go to college. And when you go there, you will feel the love that Ten Bears wants you to feel. And you can go back to that that's in us that makes us so great here and our prayer is so wonderful. So thank you for letting me do this. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, um, because we're going to take, talk a little bit about Father's Day, I want to take a moment to talk about Juneteenth. For those of you that know or maybe don't know, Juneteenth celebrates the day when all of the slaves, and I say that in quotes, received a final word that uh, they were free. So it marks a date when uh, the word finally uh, reached Texas. Now what you need to remember is that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves in the South. So even Juneteenth doesn't necessarily acknowledge all of the freed slaves until later on when we have the 13th Amendment. So here we are when we celebrate and we remember our history, it's important that we know history takes place in stages and that there's never a time when we're not finished doing the work of, of our history, of, of building a country that truly is about freedom and liberty for all. And so I encourage you to celebrate this day, the freedoms that we have, the freedoms for people of color, but also to remember that there is still work that needs to be done uh, in order for everyone to experience that abundant life that God promises. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, friends, I want to remind you that we are an open and affirming congregation. We genuinely welcome people of all ages, race, ethnicities, genders, 
sexual orientation, beliefs, those who are cognitively and or physically challenged. Our vision is to be a community of love and purpose, each one engaged in ministry, seeking to know Christ, grow in discipleship, and embody God's love for the world. This is our commitment. This is our calling. Friends, let us continue in worship. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's uh, continue in the call to worship. God of secret purposes and extravagant blessings, we come to praise you. We come because we want to. We sing our songs because we are glad to. And we pray for your grace because we need to. And we ask for the love of Christ in our hearts because without it, we are a dead loss. Please join me in standing for opening hymn number 370, This Is My Father's World. Live and believe this good news. 
In Christ Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You don't have to stand for this one, and we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God, hymn 288, two times. I can only hope. Yeah, I don't see anything that says volume. And the hours seem to have to do with the channel on one. Okay, I'm going to try to close them quietly. <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> All right. 
How are you this morning? You, you heard that we are celebrating an awful lot this day, aren't we? What are some of the things we're celebrating? Father's Day, right? And Juneteenth, do you know that one? Did you learn about that in school yet? Okay, Juneteenth is a special day in our history. And then the powwow was going on, the Native people's powwow. That's a, a good thing, don't you think? To have all these wonderful things to celebrate. Well, I want to talk about Father's Day today. So I bought a picture of a particular father, and it's not really, it's a, somebody, it's an artist's idea of what this father might look like, okay? A very famous artist, I believe. So let's unroll it here, and then maybe you can guess who that might be. So, who do you see in that picture? Anybody familiar? No, <laughs> nobody familiar to you. So I don't know whether you can all see this. This is, I believe, a Da Vinci, or uh, yeah, or Michelangelo. Sorry, it's Michelangelo. He painted this one. But this is the Holy Family. This is Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. Do you know Joseph? Oh, see, now Joseph was Jesus's earthly father. You don't hear too many stories about him after the birth of Jesus because, well, they imagined he was old and maybe died early. But early on, Joseph adopted Jesus and took care of Jesus as his son. And Joseph provided for Jesus. And in fact, when uh, they were in danger, Joseph took them to Egypt. And then Joseph brought them back into, into the um, into Galilee and into Jerusalem so that he could be blessed at the, at, the, at the temple. So Joseph really looked after Jesus when he was little and when he was young, and he probably taught him all kinds of things. Joseph was not a perfect father, though, because, you know, he's human. And fathers aren't always perfect, are they? Yeah, they make mistakes sometimes. I know mine does from time to time. But we do have a father that's perfect. Who's the father that we talk about being our perfect father? Is that God? When we say our father and we pray to him? Jesus called him Abba. Do you know what Abba means? It means Papa or Daddy. Jesus changed the way we think about God because he talked about God as in, in relationship to him, as being someone who looked after him and provided for him and loved him no matter what, because that's what fathers are about, right? So when we think about Father's Day, it is good that we give thanks for the fathers we have here on earth and for the fathers like Joseph that step in and, and look after for us and, and for the men of the church and the teachers at school, all those people who care about us, right? But it's also important that we remember that we have a Father who is perfect in heaven, who loves us no matter what, who is always ready to provide what we need. And we can always pray to this Father by calling him Abba, Papa, or Daddy, or just Father. So how about today, uh, instead of waiting for our prayer uh, later, we say the Lord's Prayer together, because then we talk about our Father. Can we say it together? All right, do you know the Lord's Prayer? We'll see, you, you listen if you, if you get lost, you listen to what people are saying, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are loved by our Father God, and so are all of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. <laughs>
We remember that on this Father's Day, if I step back from that a little bit, that our, our earthly fathers are not perfect, and that not everybody finds this an easy day to celebrate. Some because their fathers are gone, no longer in this life, some because their fathers have left them, and some because their fathers are difficult. So I remind you to be tender with each other when you wish people a happy Father's Day, that there may be more than just happy feelings that go with that, okay? Our second, our second reading, sorry, I'm trying not to overwhelm you. Our second reading comes from the book of Acts, uh, reading at the end of the fourth chapter and into the fifth chapter. So I want you to hear kind of how this, this particular text is set up. And please pay close attention because this is not a story that gets told very often in church. In fact, it's not even in our lectionary. It's hard to find resources even to talk about. So listen for this story from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everyone they owned, everything they owned, they held in common. With the great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Great grace fell upon them all, and there was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each that was in need. There was a Levite from Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He had sold a field that belonged to him, and then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of your land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after you sold it, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and he died. And great fear seized all who heard it. The young man came and wrapped his body, and they carried him out to be buried. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, knowing not what had happened. Peter said to her, tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out too. Immediately she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, may we search our hearts and minds as we seek to understand this story, as we seek to know your purposes in these words and in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So how many know this story of Sapphira and, and and Ananias, at least see biblical scholars over here. <laughs> a couple of you do. What do you think about this story? It's a little harsh. Oh, it's a little harsh. That's right. Okay, maybe if I pull this a little bit further away from me. It feels a little harsh. What else do you think about this story? 
So maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here by doing it today, right? It could be a good story. Like it's the best text for stewardship Sunday, don't you think? If you want to terrorize the congregation, right? What else do you think about this text? One out of many, many one out of few, I feel. One out of few that shows um, the destruction that God can, can provide, the negative. Yeah, yes, there's at least a question here for us about the God of love that we yes. know. Where is the grace? Where is the forgiveness? Even for this church that's supposed to be a community of love, where is the grace and forgiveness there? Of course, that's assuming that God is the one that struck them dead. And that happens in Scripture from time to time. Yeah. What else about this story catches your attention? Okay. Well, she lied a lot with her husband. She backed him up. <laughs> we actually <laughs> come. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is what happens when you agree together to conspire. You know, you've got to hope that your partner is going to say the same. Now, the, the interesting part is she doesn't know what happened to her husband when she comes to share. So she thinks we're still on for this plan we have to hold back some of the money from the sale of this property. No, it's no Pharisees asking the questions here. Uh, nobody's asking the questions in this. This is just the story that gets told and when somebody said, is it true that you stole them? Oh, Peter is asking the questions. Peter is the one as the church, the one of the apostles in the church that confronts them. And so the assumption is that Peter has somehow heard about this from other folks. And so he's going to challenge them a little bit on their um, what they promised to give and what they're giving to the church. So I think it's too bad. Let, let her. Led her along a little bit, saying, you know, is it true? And he named the price. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. He he kind of uh, led her right down that line. Okay, set her up. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so what do you imagine we're supposed to get out of this story? God is not a keeper of lies. God is not a keeper of lies. Okay. What else might we get out of this story? Don't promise what you're not going to give. Yeah. This is often the reason people don't want to pledge in churches. Because what if I can't keep my pledge at the end of the year? What if the church is not going to be gracious and forgiving if I can't make my pledge? Right? Not that it's a good reason. Sins like didn't have enough faith. Right. So I think there's a variety of things that we can learn from this text. I don't want to move us too quickly away from the money piece. Okay, this is a community of faith that's just starting out, and they are needing the support and the participation of everybody in the community. And no one was asked to give a certain amount. We are told that others like Barnabas were just moved to give what they could. And those who were probably well-to-do and perhaps had an extra piece of property or maybe some money in savings, they gave generously. They maybe gave big amounts. And those who didn't have much, because you need to remember that this is a community often made of outcasts and poor and unwell people, right? These were the folks that were not the upper echelon in the community. So they gave what they were able. The reality is, I think, that we need to remember that the church really does depend upon everybody participating in the work of the church, whether you give up your money or you give up your time or your talents. We don't do this because one person is able to give or a few people are able to give. We can only do this. We can only become the community that God is calling us to be when we all step up and are responsible and generous. I think that's the other piece here that I want to talk about the money part is 
that this was an invitation for you to be generous, to maybe even sacrifice something in order to be a part of this new thing God was doing in the world, this new message of hope where all the folks included in the church could be taken care of. Now remember, the apostles were not being paid to go about and preach and heal, so they were seriously dependent upon the community to help them out. But beyond that, it was about helping each other out. Helping each other to have enough food. Helping each other to have enough to, to get the medicine or the doctors they needed. Helping each other have a place that they could call home, where they could be included and loved. So first and foremost, I think it is about how this community is called to work together. Now, secondly, I also think it's about what uh, Vince was saying. God does not appreciate deceivers. And it's not healthy for the community if we try to deceive one another and be something more than we are. They wanted to be one of the big givers in the church, Ananias and Sapphira. They wanted to be thought of as, you know, pillars and, and, and you know, generous people, and yet in their hearts that was not the case. And Gwen, I love what you say, it was a lack of trusting God would take care of them. Now does that mean we should all go sell our properties and give, it to the, give the money to the church and then depend upon the church to look out for us? What do you think? Why is that? You see, this is where we have difficulty with this text. Okay? Partly because this was a community of people who could do that. It was a small enough community of people that they could look out for each other that way. Secondly, they thought Jesus was returning any day now. So they were not thinking long term. And when you think about how many people joined this community day after day, sooner or later they had to think about what it meant to be contributing to this community, but also to be good stewards of our own lives. Okay? But I do think God calls us to be both honest and generous about what we have to offer to the church, and to more importantly, to the ministry of Christ in the world. That it's more than just about taking care of ourselves these days, it's making sure that people in our community, not just our church community, but our larger community, are taken care of also. And that we should not try to deceive ourselves or God or the church by imagining that that will be easy for us. That we can just take it off the top or whatever's left over. If we are truly going to look after each other and look after our community, it's going to require some sacrifice on our part. So it's easily, it's easy to deceive ourselves into thinking we've done enough. And that the community knows we're generous people, we give regularly, we show up to church regularly. But I think this text challenges us. Have we not promised to offer our whole selves to God and God's purposes? Is that not our commitment as Christians, as followers of Christ, as people imbued with the Holy Spirit, to do more than what is easy, but to do what is necessary in order for others to experience this abundant life? Being part of a community of faith requires that we remember we make this commitment not only to God, but to each other. And the commitment we make to each other is not lost on God. We cannot deceive God, but we can trust in God's grace. Did Ananias and Sapphira drop dead because God struck them dead? or because of the horror of their moment caused them to die of some heart attack or stroke or whatever? Or is the story even real? Is it a parable that got told, a legend that 
rounded the church in order to help us remember that our commitment to God includes our commitment to each other. And not to just those inside the church, but those outside the church. And yes, there are times when we will fall short. When we will be, you know, maybe not so trusting, maybe a little bit greedy, maybe wanting a little bit of luxury in our lives. God still loves us, forgives us, and invites us to this life of community and sacrifice and generosity. And the Spirit empowers us for that. Amen? Amen. 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 Friends, let us sing our hymn, which is number 720, Jesus Calls Us. Number 
thanks for the many ways that you have blessed us and for this opportunity to share the goodness with others. We ask that you would send your pure spirit upon us and upon these gifts so that we might continue to be that community of love and care. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We've come to that time of our morning prayers, and again, um, after each request, whether it be a concern or a joy, I will encourage you by saying, Lord, in your mercy or with thanksgiving, and you respond, hear our prayers, and then it becomes all our prayer. Okay? So folks, are there people or concerns that you want to lift up or joys that you want to celebrate? Hi, it's me. I still have like prayers for Gay, who is doing a little better, but she's still in rehab, and her family is trying to make her house appropriate for when she comes home, because she's going to need 24 hour care. Mm -hmm. Also, prayers of joy. I got to spend time with the daughter of my heart, Naomi, and her family yesterday. She's up from Georgia, and it was the best four hours of the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, we want to say, uh, we want to offer prayers, continue prayers for Gay's healing and recovery. And we also want to give thanks for the opportunity with family, especially for your daughters. So, well, a daughter of my heart. Daughter, daughter of your heart. Lord, in your mercy, at your yeah. thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. Is just, uh, let's offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And thank you for allowing us the opportunity to worship and, and to celebrate unity as one nation under God is visible through liberty and justice for everyone. Amen. Thank you. So this is in celebration of a, of a country that continues to make progress, right? And for the celebration of Juneteenth, Lord, it is with thanksgiving. Here are our prayers. Um, I would like to offer a prayer of gratefulness. My son has returned after a month of army maneuvers. He's home safe and sound as of yesterday. And also yesterday, I'm coming up Route 27, and I recognized a car that belongs to a lifelong friend of mine. I stopped my car on 27 and he didn't know where he was. He didn't know where he was going, but he was driving this car. So I would like a prayer sent up um, for his well being and safety. You want to say his name was Jim. Jim. So prayers for Jim in his confusion for his well being and safety, and also a prayer of joy for a son returned home. It's always good news. So, Lord, in your mercy and with thanksgiving. Here are our prayers. Well, first of all, I'd like to say happy birthday to Laura. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday. <laughs> I got a call this morning from uh, Leonard. And I think he's probably now in the emergency room. He was going to call his doctor. He had a lot of he was describing things to me that I knew that the doctor was going to tell him to go to the emergency room. So I just want to pray that everything's going well with him because I don't know, but I know that he was calling his doctor. And that's what mattered. Okay. And he turned to us because he feels so good here. I know. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, let us pray for Leonard that whatever this health concern is, uh, be attended to, that he gets the care he needs. So, Lord, in your mercy. So, Laura has a birthday today, and I understand there are a couple of other birthdays going on. Tammy has a birthday. And Al Goddard has a birthday. And so does Vivian Paul. had a birthday yesterday. And, 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 and Vivian has a birthday tomorrow. So, we are grateful for the birth of these lovely and wonderful people who come into our mix. Lord, with thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, prayer. Um, I'm Mrs. Amy, and I just want a special prayer for Faith. He uh, was not feeling well. We were supposed to go last night to a fireman's um, annual um, uh, dance that she goes to, um, representing her father and everything. And sadly, she didn't feel well, and she was looking forward to it for many months. So extra prayers for her and prayers for Vivian. Um, for her birthday, uh, for, um, just thankfulness and prayers for her, Vivian as a caregiver. Just always remember those caregivers. I have a special place in my heart, and I know you all do too. Uh, for that, thank you. 
So we want to make sure that we pray uh, for Faith's healing and recovery and give thanks for Vivian and other caregivers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Okay, and an update on Phil Richardson. She is now in Somerset Woods. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. <laughs> I saw Phil yesterday. Uh, the, the, the only thing I can see that's challenging her right at the moment is her hearing. Otherwise, she's glad to be in conversation with folks. She's able to remember. She remembers people at the church very well. So if you have an opportunity, right now her children are in town. Her son and her daughter are in town. So she's got good company. But in the couple of weeks to come, she'll need some uh, company and encouragement. So if you feel so motivated. So for Phil, we want to pray for her continued recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Um, so my friend James, when he had the surgery, his one arm healed, but then he told his dad, and he think he did the same thing with his one arm that he did to the other man at the second surgery, so they they wanted for him to come back to work. Okay, so we want to give thanks for James's healing from the surgery he's had, but also pray that he might experience some healing in the other arm as well. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. I would like to say um, for the fathers, um, in many cultures, the grandfather was the leader, and that's why it's so great to have the honor. And if the grandfather wasn't there, then the dad would be there, because that meant that person was there to protect the family, provide and protect, so that his queen, who had Mother's Day already, could get protection, and his children would know how to follow what he did, and it was all done out of love and protection. So if we could have prayers for the fathers to know, you're very valuable, even when you walk in a room, you change it. So please, we need you. Thank you. Uh, just a little history about Father's Day. After we started honoring mothers for Mother's Day and stuff, there was a family of six kids who was raised by their father alone that felt like there needed to be a day to honor fathers. Well, it took a while for this to catch on, but it finally did. But it wasn't until Nixon that it was proclaimed a national holiday. So a little slow getting to our Thanksgiving for our fathers. So we need to appreciate those good fathers we have in our lives and those who act with tenderness like a father in our lives. Lord, it is with Thanksgiving. Very good. Are there others? Anything online there? Nope. We've been asked to pray uh, for Maria. She's a person in our community that's in need of prayer, that's struggling in her life. And I said that I would lift her up in our church, um, that she would get the, the uh, care and services that she need, and that she would open her heart to the care that people can provide for her. So Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. prayers. We've also been asked to pray this way for Joe Nottle. Does somebody know Joe particularly? Laura. Actually, um, his wife's girlfriend is having got a book about Okay. For something like that. Thank you. Okay. So that's the connection, but uh, it's somebody in our community that's undergoing bypass surgery, and we pray for his recovery from that. Lord, in your mercy. Your Your mercy. mercy. We also want to lift up to you uh, Marie and Jax. Both have uh, gone into the hospital for care. And we want to pray that the care they get is what they're needing, that the people that gather around them are compassionate and gentle and understanding, and more importantly, that they're the ones that, um, that can be helpful to them. So Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And again, we invite you to be prayerful for our communities that seem overwhelmed by violence these days. Lord, we ask that uh, God would just change hearts so that we would find a different way uh, to um, manage our feelings and to engage with disagreements. Lord, in your mercy. There are, are, others. are there any others? I think a lot of it is attacked by the weather. It's been incredible. We've had some wild weather, and, and there have been people impacted and even some lives lost across the country. 
Um, and so we want to pray for those who are recovering from weather events. We want to pray for our earth, for this beautiful creation that God has given us, that it might experience some healing as well, and that we will become the stewards we're called to be. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Your prayers. I want to pray today for summer, because uh, I don't know about you, but I have not experienced such glorious summer days in a long time. And, and we are certainly experiencing one today. But summer tends to be the season where we're invited to slow down. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this season of sun and slow motion, of games and court sitting, of picnics and light green fireflies, of heavy purple evenings, and praises for slight breezes, it is good, God, as the first long days of your creation. Let this season be for us a time of gathering together the pieces into which our busyness has broken us. Enable us now, O oh God, to grow wise through reflection, peaceful through the songs of the crickets, recreated through the laughter of play. And most of all, O oh Lord, let us live easily and gracefully for a spell, so that we may see our souls deeply, share in a silence unheard, listen to the sound of sunlight and shadows, explore barefoot the land of forgotten dreams and shy hopes, and find the right words to tell one another who we are. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, not to our Lord's Prayer today, because we've done that already. So I invite you, let us turn to our final hymn, which is 282. Peace. 